Hello, my name is Christopher Sparks. I'm the translator of the Keys of the Kingdom Holy Bible. And if there is one passage from the Word of God that has been written on my forehead since I began this work in 1997, 26 years ago, it is from Psalm 9, verse 4. You have maintained my right and my cause. And today I want to tell you just a little story, just a little miracle about one of the many ways that the Lord God, praise his holy name, has maintained my right and my cause and given me constant confidence that the Lord is behind this work and wants his word translated properly and organically. Now, In the summer of this year, I received a call from a radio station and they wanted to do an interview with me about a favourite walk of mine, either in West Sussex or in East Hampshire. So I thought for a little while and I nominated Old Winchester Hill, which is on the South Downs of England and about probably 10 miles, 8 miles east of the city of Winchester, Um, an ancient capital of England. And so we fixed a date and uh, indeed did the interview. And I told three little narratives about my experiences on uh, walks on Old Winchester Hill. Um, I've been there many more times than three times, but I selected three to construct a narrative. And so... um, I can say that Old Winchester Hill has for me literary and spiritual connections which will become clear as uh, my narrative unfolds. So I told first of a day in 1961 when I was 10. My mother took me on a bus, an old charabank of a bus, to the Hampshire village of Westmean. We went into the Westmean stores and she bought me a big bottle of Tizer, which is a sort of fizzy pop thing. And I thought I was such a big boy with my own bottle of Tizer and I didn't have to share it with my brother. And uh, I felt like I was a man with his own bottle of beer or something. And from Westmean we walked up to Old Winchester Hill. Uh, it's not very far, probably a couple of miles or so. And so um, on arrival, um, you walk through a car park, a, a small car park, and through a gate, and then a longer ridge, and then past some woods, or through the woods, if you like, and then up onto some barrows, which was, uh, and there was some sort of ancient fort there. And um, as a trigonometry point, and you look out to the English Channel. Well, we didn't walk past the woods, we walked through the woods. And my mother told me they were juniper trees. I've always remembered that. And in between the juniper trees, right in front of our eyes, there was a flash of gold. Like um, a flash of gold from the end of a shotgun barrel. And uh, so my mother says, what was that? Well... I had a book called Birds of Field and Forest by an artist called Demartini with illustrative paintings of birds and a little um, paragraph or two on the facing page about the birds. And I had other bird books that my parents were buying me and I still have all those bird books um, and bird eggs as well and uh, still in there my childish writing so... I must have been seven or eight when I started getting these books. But I recognised from the Demartini book, which is incidentally still obtainable, I found it um, on the internet, and um, a bird known in Latin as Oriolus Oriolus, is its species, species name. Now the convention with these Latin species names is they're put in italics, And the first word is capitalised and the second is decapitalised. So the Latin for a wren, a little bird, is troglodytes, troglodytes. And, but this was an aureolus aureolus. And the English form of that was a golden oriole. 
Now, a golden oriole is an extremely rare visitor from Europe to England. I've never met anybody else who's seen one, although somebody did tell me that uh, one of my um, private students told me that she had heard somebody else about 10 years ago saw one there. Uh, so that was um, a hearsay um, sighting. Um, but I, I know, it's the rarest bird I've ever seen. And uh, so that is just sort of emblazoned in my mind that day with my mum. And uh, any, any time I go there and walk past or through those woods, I remember this flash of gold of Aureolus Aureolus. And I'm sort of thinking it still might be there, you know, uh, 60 two years later I would still think of it now when I walk through there how am I going to see the golden oriole and uh, so this is how the literary connections began for uh, Old Winchester Hill and um, I wrote a poem of family incidents or oh, I don't know 10 years or so ago and um, I concluded it with uh, recalling this vision of the golden oriole and um, and my constant desire and hope of seeing it again. So I'll just read you the end of the poem. A golden oriole flying in front of us in the juniper woods and suspending the disbelief that the same golden oriole is still flying between the juniper trees. After 55 years of migrating there, and that if we cross the river to the woods and wait there long enough, out of the same trees it will whiz before us like gifts of flying gold. If the ferryman hasn't fallen asleep at the wheel, if we haven't missed the ferry. So that's the end of the poem. And then six years ago I wrote a prose account of this sighting, I called it Gold in the Hills, and it's a humorous account from a child's point of view with sort of malapropisms, that means where you don't quite get the word right. Um, so like um, awful spoon instead of afternoon, that sort of thing. And um, some spoonerisms. So my dad bought me a pair of inoculators for watching the birds. And uh, we were walking through the jujitsu trees and uh, so, as a, a Welsh Eisteddfod bard might well um, express the language of poetry, or in this one, the voice of a child in the mouth of a scholar. Um, that was the sort of phrasing they had. And uh, so I also wrote various metaphors for this vision of gold, a decoration of Art Nouveau, a lacquer work of Japanese, a Greek vase of Arcadia, a theatrical backdrop, a flash of yellow stardust. And so that's the first incident involving Old Winchester Hill. And then fast forward 50 years and when my son um, got to about five, six or seven sort of infant junior age, I used to take him up there from time to time. And it's a an ancient um, Iron Age settlement and nature conservation area and there's a hut by the car park, tasteful little wooden hut, um, with colourful posters in there of the sort of um, birds and flora you might see and butterflies. And um, one of the posters is um, a large uh, portrait of an Iron Age hunter with a bow drawn with a sharp arrow and this really captured the imagination of my young son who wanted to be a hunter and so we used to go out through the <laughs> walk through the jiu-jitsu trees and um, scour about um, the soil and the flints looking for arrowheads and spearheads and um, letting our imagination go um, in fact, one time we were doing that in a trout river and he picked up something and threw it to me and uh, I, it was covered in mud and I 
um, cleaned it off. And it was a large pair of teeth, about an inch and a half large and long. And um, I had to Google all sorts of teeth when I got home. So this was about 15 years ago. Uh, the same kind of era as we when he, I took him to Old Winchester Hill. And these were bison teeth, a pair of bison teeth we found in a river in West Sussex. Extraordinary. But going back to Old Winchester Hill, we'd have these lovely days out there and I've got a photograph of him sort of posed like a warrior. Uh, wonderful. And one day a friend of mine came round with his two children and um, so I took my two children um, out with him and his two children to Old Winchester Hill or to, um, yeah, one thing I was going to say that uh, my son and I used to think Old Winchester Hill was a really sort of boring, square, old person's name for a hill. And we used to think up more exotic names like Spearhook Hotel and Winchester 88 and Guncrack Pass. And uh, But we settled on Warrior Hill, that's what we called it. So with this friend and his two, we went up to Warrior Hill and for a long walk, wonderful, beautiful summer's afternoon, and skylarks were in chorus. And at one moment, I just let them all walk on, um, my friend and the four children, and I just hung back and watched and listened to these skylarks and and making a few mental notes and so the next day or two I wrote uh, a fairly long prose account of our walk and um, and from that I made a poem called I called Sky Music describing the um, skylarks and, um, and which I called Sky Sparklers and what was the other one um, oh yeah radio heads um, singing their Mardi Gras, so sort of um, medieval romance. And so yeah, you can see how um, Warray Hill has um, literary and family um, connections for me at a pretty deep level. And then there was another little thing I wrote, um, just a very short poem, if you can call it a poem, when your sparklers out, head to the hills and listen to the skylark music. It's insouciance, it's bells of joy, eight miles high. Well, head to the hills, insouciant. One day I wasn't quite so insouciant. Now this is the third event. At the beginning of lockdown, 2020, in the month of May, I received a phone call one Saturday morning from my publisher saying he'd had an eight-page letter from somebody, um, no address, and, but that it was signed with a name, and it was telling him that he should publish no further works by me, that there are things about me the public ought to know, that I'm brain damaged, and so on. So. He said, can you guess who wrote this? I said, no, I have no idea. And he said the name. Well, it was somebody known to me. This came um, like a bolt out of the blue. And there's no context for this. And then, a few, about three weeks later, I think it was, I received a letter from the same person, again, no address, but this time not signed, and just it just started sparks, and proceeded to tell me how deceived I am, and how um, he hates my Christian friends, and it said, I hate, 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 so and so and so and so, They're all in capital letters, hate, hate, hate. And again, how I'm brain damaged, and that uh, he was once sitting in a car with somebody, and I walked past, and this person said to him, Oh, that's Chris Sparks, he's got a lot of serious problems. Of course, he didn't say who the person was or what my uh, alleged problems were. 
and he said it had it had been some time ago. And he accused me of every perversion under the sun. It was um, full of pornographic I imagery and descriptive detail. And he's, it said he'd written to my publisher telling him to not publish anything by me. And now there are two sentences that I remember. One is concerning the publisher. He will obey my instructions. That was one of the sentences. And another was, I loathe you, you foulsome creature. 37 typed pages with no um, typographical errors, perfectly punctuated, educated um, you know, um, writer. And so because it was full of pornographic imagery, I couldn't keep this as any kind of um, evidence or witness um, that I thought, well, the mother of Jesus wouldn't have had that kind of thing in her house. So I took it on a favourite river walk with a cigarette lighter and ceremonial, ceremoniously burned it. And um, I know I was absolutely stunned. So when your spark is out, head to the hills and listen to the sky music. Or was it the skylight music? It's insouciance, it's bells of joy, eight miles high. So head to the hills I did to tell my Lord and God all about this. Now, a little um, context to it. At this time, 2020, so May, June 2020 now, the um, my tr translation was becoming almost ready for publication, I was thinking. And so I was looking for a title. Um, I first had titled my work The Believer's Bible, so believer apostrophe S, so for a single, a single believer. Um, but then somebody found out that there is already a Bible translation called The Believer's Bible, so that had to go. And so then I wasn't sure. But I had just come up at that time with Keys of the Kingdom, but I wasn't quite sure how to fully word it. Keys of the Kingdom Bible, Keys to the Kingdom, Keys for the Kingdom, The Keys to the Kingdom. And I was playing with all these possibilities. But at least I'd got Keys and Kingdom and Bible. And how was I going to word it and so I was enjoying this I, I loved this idea keys of the kingdom or keys for the kingdom or something that uh, with the alliteration and that the jangling of the keys and uh, so with this uh, oh yeah I didn't say it in this letter that there was a threat um, as well as saying the publisher will obey my instructions in this pompous way, um, there was also a threat that if I publish anything else, there will be consequences, and I have my spies, as what was written. So it was threatening. So yeah, head to the hills I did, and uh, I went to Old Winchester Hill, drove up, and uh, parked my car at the car park, and took my burden to the Lord, walked along the ridge, um, past the jiu-jitsu trees, and, um, and up onto the barrows and sat by the trigonometry point looking out to the um, Solent of the English Channel where you can see um, in front of you Portsmouth and to your right Southampton and then um, across the waters, the Isle of Wight, and I sat there and laid everything before the Lord and uh, prayed for wisdom and guidance and, um, and of course, praising and just getting the whole thing before the Lord and laying it on him and offloading it from myself, which is what we do. And then when I was satisfied, 
I walked back um, down the barrows, past the jiu-jitsu trees, along the ridge, past the little hut, and into the car park, and parked adjacent to my car was a car with a registration that uh, shot before my eyes like um, the gold of a golden oriole, like um, the f- flash of a gun out of a barrel. G4KTK. G4KTK. And I just looked at this, and immediately I read it as Go for Keys of the Kingdom. <laughs> Praise you, Lord just after I'd finished praying. Now, I have to tell you, I'm not one who goes around looking for signs. I really don't. I don't look in um, crosswords for (laughs) um, signs. I don't look in the sky and clouds for signs. I don't look in shop windows for signs and don't listen out for words for signs or headlines for signs. Um, actually there is a form of um, looking for signs from birds and it's called ornithoscopy so ordinary bird watching is ornithology but looking for signs is called ornithoscopy and it's in the poetry of the Greek poet Homer and so I don't do that sort of thing I really don't if I want God to speak to me Uh, I'm reading the Word of God. That's where I expect God to speak to me and through my brothers and sisters and then um, when I can trust my own judgment in my own spirit. I do not go looking at car registration um, plates for signs, but this, it was a flash of gold, a, a gun crack shot. And I just read it. Go for keys of the kingdom. And so I did. I have and I did. And here is the keys of the kingdom holy bible. So it was published about 18 months after that event. It was published in February of last year, 2022. And so now I've spent um, 26 years on this translation work. I continue to work on it at least six days a week. And uh, I've spent tens of thousands of hours and tens of thousands of pounds ever since that little revelation inside August 1997, sitting in the sun by a lake on a bench and thinking about William Tyndale and um, errors in the popular translations and how, yes, yes, a proper translation has got to be made. And I went home and started. And so the Lord has maintained my right and my cause all those years. And it's been extraordinary. The um, people I've met, the people that the Lord has brought before me, the books that have come my way, it really has been absolutely remarkable. And yes, there has been opposition, um, name-calling. Um, I think the best one, that somebody wrote on a YouTube video about me. Uh, what did he say? Just a deluded hippie. <laughs> That's after I spent... This was um, 2019, somebody wrote that. Um, so then I'd spent 22 years now head inside Greek grammars and lexicons and poring over Greek and Hebrew texts and <laughs> just a deluded hippie. So some of them, well, most of them I enjoy, um, but I say 95, 97% of the feedback has been absolutely ecstatic and I could not now imagine... Um, how my life would have been if I hadn't been um, running this campaign for translation truth since 1997. And there are many more stories I could tell you, wonderful stories of how 
the Lord has maintained my right and my course. And that um, that um, gun crack shot, if you like, of that number plate that just leapt out at me, that is just one of many. So thank the Lord and thank you for listening. And if you like this channel, please do consider subscribing and uh, please click the like button and uh, and also um, I always love reading your comments so please do leave a comment thank you and god bless you all